Okay, folks, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial about um, currents and tides and a thing called the rule of twelfths. It'll help you work out uh, when there might be strong currents in the sea and when there might not be strong currents. So on average in Ireland, uh, the tide takes about six and a half hours to come in or go out. Oops, let's try that again. Uh, approximately. So... Uh, from low tide to high tide might be about six and a half hours and from high tide back to low tide again might be another six and a half hours so uh, it varies a little bit from day to day it might be six and a quarter hours it might be six hours 40 whatever so it's, it's just approximately six and a half hours now of course uh when the tide is coming in and going out lots of water is moving over and back so you know the water flows in one direction when the tide is coming in and then when it's going out again it flows in the opposite direction and that causes currents in the sea and depending on the shape of the landscape and the shape of the seabed and so on, those currents are going to be different in uh, different places. Now, for the purposes of, of this little tutorial, I'm going to assume that it only takes six hours. It's just simpler if uh, we talk about it in terms of six hours instead of six and a half hours. But you, you get the picture. So, for example, uh, we'll say uh, it's at low tide at 12 midday and it's at high tide at uh, 6 p.m., right? And I'm going to draw a scale here, uh, and there's going to be one notch for each hour. So, excuse my rough uh, drawing here, but you'll get the picture now in a minute what I'm trying to explain. So that's 12 midday, that's 1 p.m., that's 2 p.m., that's 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., and finally 6 p.m. So we'll assume that it is um, low at 12 midday and high at 6 p.m. But it would, what I'm about to show you would work the same the other way around if it was high at midday and low at 6 p.m. So there's a thing called the rule of twelfths uh, because the current, uh, the speed of the tide or the, the amount of water that's moving is not consistent throughout that entire six hour period. It changes. So at sometimes the water is moving quite fast and other times it's moving more slowly. So in other words, sometimes the current is strong and sometimes it's weak. So there's a rule called the rule of twelfths. Uh, let me just write it in here. Uh, and then I'll explain what it is, but you'll probably figure out halfway through my explanation uh, what I am on about here. Anyway, so in the first hour, in this case between midday and 1 p.m., because midday happens to be low tide, uh, we get one twelfth of the water, the total amount of water that's going to move, one twelfth of it will move in that first hour. Uh, in the second hour, that's between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. in this case, uh, two twelfths of the water will move. So that means that on average in that second hour, uh, the current is going to be twice as strong than it was in the first hour. So the, there's twice as much water moving in that second hour than there was in the first hour. And the same for the, the third hour. Uh, so that's between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, three times as much water is going to move. Uh, three twelfths of the total amount of water uh, that's going to move in the entire in the entire six hour period, uh, three twelfths of it is going to move uh, in that uh, one hour between uh, two and three. So in that case, uh, it means that the current is going to be three times stronger on average in that hour there than it was in the, at the beginning hour back here. And the same again in the uh, the the fourth hour. Again, it's three twelfths uh, of the water, so quite strong movement. Then in the fifth hour, it starts to tail off. You're 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 down to two twelfths. And finally, in the sixth hour, the last hour before it's high tide, it slows down even further, and it's back to one twelfth of the total amount of water uh, that's going to move. And if we add up all those fractions, you'll see it becomes twelve twelfths or one. <laughs> um, so uh, what? Uh, does that effectively mean for us with regard to the speed of the current? Uh, well, if you're going to swim somewhere that uh, there's a current and there's not currents everywhere, so it's only this is only relevant really for swimming somewhere that there are currents. Uh, the safest time to swim is either in the first hour after low water or high water, or the first hour before low, the last hour before low water or high water. So basically, that two hour period around high water or low water is when. Uh, the uh, currents are at their weakest and and usually uh, the closer you are to um, 
the the actual changeover of the tide where it starts to turn either from going out to coming in or coming into going out the closer you are to that usually is when the currents are weakest and of course the worst time uh, because the currents will be strongest is in the middle of the tides kind of ha those two hours that are halfway between high and uh, and low tide and this is generally speaking the time you would not want to be swimming now just one caveat on all of this um sometimes because of the shape of the coastline and the shape of the seabed there's a bit of a lag so sometimes for example uh there might be an hour up to an hour of a lag or even a couple of hours of a lag so that the uh rule of 12th is kind of shifted forward by an hour or two because the tide is effectively delayed flowing past certain places because of resistance from the seabed and the shape of the shoreline and so on so it, it's not a completely and utterly hard and fast rule but it is a, it's, it's a good rule of thumb and uh you should keep it in mind if you're trying to work out how strong the currents are going to be well, that's all for now.